Hi, this is Born62, I'm Herr Gürs. Today we are going to look at a pretty advanced kettlebell exercise called the double handed kettlebell swing with row. Before you even attempt this, you should master the one handed kettlebell swing. And that is not to make this very dramatic or anything like it, but you have to be fairly good at that exercise to try this one. If you remember, the key elements to the one hand and kettlebell swing is shoulder rotation. Like with all kettlebell swings, you have the weight on your heels, you bend slightly at your knees, but they are stationary, you don't squat up and down. Your hip hinge, you keep your core tight and you keep your back flat. But because you're only using one hand at a time, you need to be very careful with your shoulders because there's no other hand to stabilize the kettlebell. Therefore, you do an internal rotation of your shoulder at the bottom part of the swing so your thumb is pointing backwards. And when you come up, you do an external rotation of your shoulder so your thumb is pointing upwards. Same stuff goes for the double kettlebell swing. Both thumbs are pointing backwards and when you come up both points, uh, thumbs are pointing upwards. In this exercise, the end of the swing, the high point of the swing, ends differently. Here we come up and then we move our arms out to the side and up like this, engaging all the smaller muscles at the top of your back, the rhomboids, the trapezius and so on, but also using the lateral head of your deltoids and the rear head of your deltoids coming up like this. If you remember the, the exercise called a face pull, you'll see we end up almost in the same position, not quite, but almost. So the traps are engaged, the upper back is engaged, the shoulders are engaged. In a normal kettlebell swing with just one kettlebell and two hands, you will come up like this and that means that the upper part of your chest and your front delt are very much engaged but not so much the back, it stabilizes but it doesn't work at the same level as it does in this exercise. There's a reason why we don't call this an upright roll. An upright roll, like we normally see it with either barbell or dumbbells, is performed somewhat like this and you end up with your hand lower than your elbow. And that means that your shoulder is internally rotated up here. Same stuff goes with a dumbbell lateral raise. You come up like this and if you remember the exercise, we are pouring water out of the kettle, so to speak. The thumb is pointing downwards. All that is done to engage the lateral head of the delt. And we do it rather slowly and under control. Not so with a kettlebell swing. Then we come up with a dynamic swing where we can use more weight than we could actually use in a lateral raise. Therefore, we don't want an internal rotation of our shoulder because that can hurt the shoulder. Impingement, if you've ever heard of that, is something that comes with, with an internal rotation of the shoulder and too much resistance. Personally, I don't like the upper row at all. That's another story, we can take that in another video. But the, with this one, we don't want the elbows higher than the hands. So you can either go for a neutral position where the hands and the elbows are at the same height and you are pulling back what's like in a row, or you can come up and actually get your hands higher up than your elbows, like in a high pull, or if you are doing some kind of face pull, something to work your shoulders. If you can manage, I would have my hands higher up than the elbows, that way I'm doing an external rotation of the shoulders. So, as you can probably tell by now, this is a pretty advanced and technical exercise and as always, start out with light weights because you don't want to hurt yourself. Also, with a double kettlebell swing, you need a little more distance between your feet because both kettlebells should be able to pass between your knees without you hurting yourself. And believe me, there's nothing that hurts as much as a kettlebell that hits a knee. So let's look at the exercise. Okay, here we go. 
thumbs pointing backwards, and we come up like this. And that's it really, as you can tell, these are only 16 kilo kettlebells that makes up for 32 kilos all in all, and that's pretty heavy. I can do around 10 reps in a decent form, but if I was going for more reps, I would choose lighter kettlebells. So be careful with this one. There are a lot of ways you can harm yourself with this exercise. On the other hand, the dividend it pays back is good shoulder development along with all the other benefits of kettlebell swings. So that was it for today. Hope to see you next week. Hi.